Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about how to hire, train, and actually manage appointment setters to ultimately help your business scale exponentially and reach new heights. Now, it's really important before you actually hire or even start looking into appointment setters that you have product market fit, you're doing about 20, 30, $40,000 a month, you're able to actually sell prospects on the phone or on Zoom yourself, and you want to make sure that your product actually delivers results because if you bring in appointment centers, you try to bring in an external sales team before you actually have product market fit, then it's going to be really tough because your sales team is going to be kind of building the business for you, right? And this was a mistake that I actually made. We hired about 25, 26 different appointment centers, salespeople, all within the span of four to five months. And I ended up blowing through 50 to close to $100,000 on both ad spend and actually base pays for the appointment centers. And what I realized later on was that our offer wasn't as dialed as it could have been, right? Our sales process wasn't at, like where it should have been. Um, and then I could have also just been closing more deals and getting a higher net income from that, right? So before you start hiring sales team, before you even kind of delve into all this, I definitely make sure that, hey, you have a proven offer, you know how to sell it, right? And, and your clients are actually getting results. But once you have that, then to get to the next level, it's very important to have appointment setters, have a sales team, because that's what's going to get you back your time to make the product better, everything else like that, right? So really where we're starting off here um, is on the hiring process, right? So generally this is going to come from your internal network, right? So over on Instagram, I have about 400 close to 430,000 followers now. Um, so I can really just put a job application out there. I'll get a ton of applicants. We had probably three or 400 applicants over the past few months uh, when we first were kind of doing more of an external hiring process. Um, but if you don't have that sort of network, right, then there's generally like different Facebook groups you can go into. These are like remote closing groups. These are appointment setting groups, right? And there's a ton of people in there. Now, what I found from people that are actively trying to find jobs there, right? A lot of them may not necessarily have the skills because otherwise if they did, right, they probably have a job. So that is one thing about recruiting in Facebook groups. Um, I've generally found that the best people are gonna be from my internal community. And then once you find a good hire, they can generally bring on someone else that's within their network that they think is gonna be a good fit, right? So ultimately that's been super helpful for me um, in kind of helping scale our sales team as well. Now, the third, right, is gonna be on LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter, other external um, hiring processes. And at some point, right, like we're not currently there in our business, but at some point when we're scaling out new teams, building more of like a corporate structure, that's going to be more of an internal recruiter that will hire, bring on. And that's someone that you're paying six figures a year, right? Um, to ultimately manage everything and just do all of the recruiting for you. So you don't have to spend all that time for hiring, interviewing, everything like that, right? Now, the interview process, right? We use a general interview application right here. So this is a little setup um, that I like to show. And this is pretty much like a two or three minute rundown of, hey, this is exactly what we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for inbound appointment setters. If you're interested, just apply and you can see if you're a good fit, right? Then when they go to the application page after they watch the video, there'll be some sort of questionnaire where it's pretty much filling out more personal information, right? They're getting more info on your company, kind of the earning, um, I guess, expectations that, can, that they can get, right? Because obviously that's important. Um, and then you have a variety of different questions. So um, on these questions, I'll kind of ask like, hey, what are your favorite qualities about yourself? Why did you leave your previous job? Why do you want to join our organization? And I found that asking more of these not really logical questions, it's more like, hey, tell me about yourself or are you a good culture fit, right? I found that having someone that's a good culture fit is actually more important than the skills because the skills can be learned but culture fit can never actually be learned, right? That has to like come with the person and they have to have the same ethics, the same morals, the same values. And I think that is ultimately a lot more important than having the, hey, I'm dialed in, right? Like I'd rather have a hustler who shows up on time, who fucking goes after it, right? Rather than someone that has the talents, but doesn't ever put it to use, right? 
So that's ultimately um, what I'd say is like the most important when it comes to hiring. And that's just kind of my philosophy on, on that. Now, we then have a two-step process generally for hiring. So the first interview is conducted by Kevin. He runs our kind of whole operations, everything like that. So he interviews them. And then if he's like, hey, Koa, this guy's a good fit, I'll kind of hop on. It's more of just like seeing if they're a culture fit. So seven, Kevin's more on like the skill side. And then I'm more on, hey, this person actually aligns with my values, my morals, kind of what our company's mission is, right? Um, and if you're looking to scale to the next level, you have to have the best people, right? So that's ultimately what we do there. Uh, then kind of for our training process, right? This is also, of course, very important. So when we first onboarded people, we had no training, right? It was just like, hey, here's our offer. Here's kind of what scripts we use, kind of go figure it out, right? That doesn't really work. And when we changed everything, we actually put together Kajabi modules. We put together like Tetra modules. And I'm not going to go into that specifically as that's obviously like private information there. Um, but pretty much setting up different training modules for, hey, this is step one. You set up your Google admin, right? You set up your Google calendar. You set up your Calendly, your Zoom, right? This is how you set up your CRM, right? So we use something called Blocks AI, which is like our Instagram chatbot, CRM tool, everything like that. Um, and pretty much when someone gets onboarded, they get access to everything there. And then they kind of learn more about our sales scripts, our sales processes, everything like that. And then that's ultimately how they get onboarded into the team, right? Now, after someone comes on board, right, they're in the Slack channel, everything like that, um, we obviously have to introduce them to the rest of the team. So that's very important because we want the team to make sure, hey, this person's bought in with the vision and they're ultimately going to help you guys when, like, as we grow and as we scale. Right. So very important. Once again, kind of comes back to culture fit, but getting them ramped up as fast as possible. Now on the training side of things, I like to actually be on like kind of one on one calls with that person um, just to make sure that they feel welcome. Um, and at some point this will be more Kevin or Eva on our team, like other people. Um, but kind of where we're at, right? We're, we're around 14 to 15 people at any given time right now. Um, so I still like having that more personal touch with everyone, but at some point, right, let's say we're at 30, 40, 50 people, that's just not going to be possible. So at some point that will change, but for the moment, right, I just want to make sure everyone within the organizations bought in and has that culture fit because ultimately if you have the culture fit, you have the empathy, you have, you're able to connect to people on a deeper level. In my opinion, you can figure the rest out, right? So then when it comes to management, right, and kind of like the daily schedule, um, this really comes to three main things that I like to track, right? So every Monday we have a team meeting, we're like, hey, show up on time, team meeting, right? And then each separate day, right, there are specific KPIs for dials, messages, amount of book calls, amount of demos, right? All of that sort of info that we need that we know like hey if we want to hit this revenue goal or this cash collected goal we have to hit these kpis right so by hitting those kpis making sure we're consistent with that that's ultimately what gets us towards the cash collected goals and and we also have internal kpis for hey this is how many people we onboarded this time this is how many people that we got staffed got placed right so there's so many different kpis and it's just figuring out which ones are necessary for your company um, and KPIs is the, the key performance indicators, right? So whatever is important to your company that will help you grow, document those, right? And then once you're having those team meetings, whatever it is, just implement, hey guys, we have to hit these numbers and then this is how we're gonna hit our cash rolls, right? And then from there, it's, it's easy because you just make sure you hit the numbers and you hit the cash rolls. Um, now, a thing that we do like to use is our end of day reports. So we actually have an appointment setter job form uh, which is pretty much where um, this, like our setters all put this info in daily. Um, so it's like number of emails sent, number of texts sent, number of phone calls, right? Um, number of messages sent on Instagram DMs, whatever that may be. And then it's like how much cash collected, et cetera. And then for our closers, um, and this is also for our setters when they were doing calls, but um, pretty much they're gonna put, hey, their name, You'll put a, a Zoom link recording. So for all of our Zoom calls, for closing calls, right? Those are recorded. And then our sales guys actually go put those into um, that, like into this job form so that everyone's able to see it, right? And then um, we'll pretty much put, hey, this is the result of the call. I felt 
I had a five on confidence. I, let's say um, I, I was a five at finding the customer's true motivation for buying, right? And then we also have our closers say how they match tonality, right? Because tonality is a huge thing when it comes to sales. And that's really important that we want to track that. So then this holds our closers and setting team accountable because it's like each day they know that we're checking it. And this just makes sure that we're all on the same page because we're like, hey, why did we not hit our KPIs? Well, maybe I felt like shit today, right? So it's how can we fix that? And then those feedback loops is ultimately what allows us to, to grow, right? Now, here's some simple math, right? Really breaking it down. Um, but let's say you're doing $10,000 a month and you have one $10,000 program, right? So maybe you sell two people on your $10,000 program, you collect $5,000 cash, and then the next month you collect another 5,000 cash. Well, let's say you wanna scale that 10X. Let's say you wanna to get to 100,000 a month. Well, if you really break it down, right? And this is when it's nice to kind of know this data because then when you bring on appointment setters, then you know like, hey guys, we have to hit these KPIs because this is what's gonna make us this much cash, right? So let's say you have a $10,000 program with 50% cash collected up front. Well, let, that means on average, right, you're getting $5,000 in cash. So how much do you need to get to 100,000? Well, you need to make, right, 20 sales. 20 sales, $5,000 a piece, $100,000 a month, right? So how can we do that? Well, let's say you have a 20% closing rate, right? So for every 100 book calls, 20% closing rate, right? you have 20 closed deals, right? So by doing that math there, then you know, okay, we have to book 100 booked calls every single month. And on average, right, 30 days in a month, that's about 3.33 calls a day. So that's all you have to do to hit $100,000 a month if, if you have a 100% show up rate. So maybe it's a little bit more, maybe 120 book calls, but you get the picture, right? Now, let's say it takes 30 messages to send in order to get one book call. Now we said we wanted to get 100 book calls, so 30 times 100, 3,000, right? Now, by sending 3,000 messages, you get 100 book calls, then you have a 20% close rate, right? So then 20 new clients, and they each pay you $5,000, so then you have $100,000 a month. And if you break it down there, then it's like, okay, cool. I'm able to do this by myself, but I'm spending 12 hours a day. So how can I get my time back? Well, that's hiring appointment setters. And then from there, you can be like, okay, we hire two appointment setters, and then from there, they're able to each send 1,500 messages a month, right? Maybe they're 50% as effective as you, but you have two people. And then from there, each appointment setter books 50 calls, it's 100 calls total, and boom, you hit $100,000 a month. So really, that's the math that I like to break down, and ultimately, by understanding all your data, all your numbers, all your KPIs, right, that's ultimately how you're going to get your business to first seven figures whatever else that may be, right? Um, but but that, that's, that's really breakdown. It's, it's kind of simple, I guess. Um, and it took me seven, eight months to figure this out. Uh, we're still not fully there, but um, definitely getting a lot better. And I'm really happy with, with how the team's grown. So um, hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you liked, uh, feel free to share with friends, comment, comment your feedback down below, right? And feel free to subscribe. And Kikoa, nice to meet you. Have a wonderful day. Talk soon.